All right, folks, how are you doing? So following on from my Wallace Dragon King video, I decided to have a look into Wallace's lineage. So we're going back to the book William Wallace, Robin Hood Revealed, Appendix 2, The Ancestry and Genealogy of Wallace. And this is the origin of the Crawford family. So this is on his mother's side of the family. So we're on page 308. So let's have a look. The name Crawford is a corruption of two Celtic words, crowed and fort, pronounced crotfort, and signifying a shelter place for cattle. All the Crawfords are descended from Thorlungus, an Anglo-Danish chief who was expelled from Northumberland by William the Conqueror and found asylum in Scotland. He received a grant of land in the Merse from Edgar, King of Scots, who reigned from 1097 until his death on the 8th of January, 1106. This information is taken from Crawford's MS, The History of the Crawfords, that resided in the Advocates Library, Edinburgh, in the 19th century. It is further corroborated by Anderson's Diplomata, which was compiled at the request of the Scots Parliament. So William Wallace had English blood and Danish blood as well. So we'll go into it a little bit more. It seems likely that Thorlongus's expulsion took place between the years 1069 and 1074, when William the Conqueror waged a merciless war upon the Northumbrians. The Doomsday Book, compiled in 1079, mentions that before that year Thor was deprived of his possessions, meaning Thorlongus. Though this book isn't always clear, I have to say. The evidence that he received lands from Edgar is further corroborated in the archives of Durham Cathedral. The author gives the successive descendants of Thorlongus who were eventually to assume the name Crawford. Thorlongus had two sons, the elder named Swain and William, the younger son, whose name appears on a charter by William de Veterpont in the Durham archives. Swain's name appears on several charters of Edgar's reign, as in one given by the king to the monastery at Coldingham of the lands of Swinton. Swain also appears on a charter of David I as possessing the fishery at Fiswick near Berwick. Galfredus, son of Swain, is also mentioned in these archives. Galfredus had two sons, Hugh the Elder and Reginald, of whom we shall return to. It was from Galfredus that the name Crawford originated. His grandson, Galfredus, who was the son of Hugh, is a witness to the charter of Bishop Roger of St Andrews, given to the monastery at Kelso in 1179 and died about 1202. His son, Reginald Crawford, is witness to a charter of Richard Labard to the same monastery, together with William, John and Adam, his sons, in 1228. Of the first two sons, no other memorial exist, exists. The second son, second, it's written here second without a D. Honestly, people, pay attention to your grammar. But anyway, the second son, John, is de designated Dominus de Eodum Mile, in several donations. He died in 1248, leaving no male issue. He did have two daughters, of whom the eldest was married to Archibald Douglas, ancestor of all the Douglases whose descent can be traced. The second daughter married David de Lindsay of Watchopadale, ancestor of all the Lindsays in Scotland. Sir John Crawford and his two daughters are mentioned in Wood's Peerage under the title Crawford, and authorities for this information are stated in the margins. So there you go. William Wallace was uh, descended from the great Anglo-Danish chief Thorlongus. Let me know in the comments if you've ever heard of him. This is the first time his name's come to my attention. All right, folks, so I decided to have a little look at this Thorlongus chap, see who he was, see what the internet has to say. So really just much the same. It says he was an early uh, 12th century Anglo-Saxon noble associated with Roxburghshire, a culturally Northumbrian and Brythonic Cumbric Celt, Carveti, Brigantes, Selgavi territory ruled by the Scottish kings from the 11th century onwards, a charter dating between 1107 to 1113 and 1124 claims that Thor the Long founded Ednam previously a deserted waste granted to him by King Edgar of Scotland. 
So it says here, Ednam lies close to the Northumberland border with Roxburghshire. The charter states that he repopulated the settlement with his own followers and built a church. That was nice of him. The charter grants the church to the monks of St Cuthbert. Uh, there survives the notice of this grant given by Thor to his Lord Earl David, the future King David I of Scotland, as well as Earl David's confirmation of the same grant. Thor had a brother named Leofwine, sorry if I'm butchering that, uh, mentioned in Thor's charter as requiring redemption. Leofwine the monk was commemorated in the Martyrology, never even knew that was a word, Martyrology of the Durham Cantor's book for June the 2nd, Day of Death. And in the same source, Thor Lungus was commemorated for May the 14th. The year of his death and descendants are not known, but Ednam appears to have been transferred into the crown's hands by 1136. Well, if you read William Wallace, Robin Hood Revealed, they do answer who his descendants were. <laughs> One of them was William Wallace. So, let's see what it says here. Uh, several Scottish families, clans, claim their either lineage or namesake of Thor Longus. Uh, long Lang Lang meaning tall. That's interesting because William Wallace was known for his height. He was said to have been six foot nine. And of course, if William Wallace is descended from Thor the Tall, basically, Thor Longus, you know, Thor the Big Man, to use the colloquial Scots, <laughs> then that's not surprising. So yeah, Thor the Tall's descendant was William Wallace, it would seem. But yeah, there's not really a whole lot in Thor Longus, as you might imagine. Uh, tried this one as well. Just says basically the same thing. The House of Crawford considers all those surnamed Crawford as descended from a common ancestor, from the barony of, sorry, from the barony of Crawford in Lanarkshire. So yeah, when you go back that far, it gets a bit spotty, really. Which shouldn't really be surprising. The House acknowledges as its progenitor the Anglo-Danish chief Thor Lungus Thor the Tall who is most closely identified with the Merse in southern Scotland. A marshy area west of Berwick and north of the River Tweed, Thorlungus also held lands in Northumbria. He fled to Scotland in the winter of 1068-69 when William the Conqueror ravished Northumbria. Thorlungus served under Malcolm Cadmore during the Dino-Scottish War with William the Conqueror. He was granted lands in Edinburgh by King Ed Edgar around 1107. That explains it then why he was granted the lands because he served as a chief or in his capacity as a chief he served in the in the war against William the Conqueror that explains it Thor Longus is known uh, in documents located in Durham Cathedral archives as the overlord of Crawford so it's actually quite a prestigious lineage when you think about it pretty interesting stuff though leave your uh, thoughts and comments below